Hello. Hello, Sihali. Hello. Yeah, we are live, by the way. So, yes, I yes. think we have uh, 22 participants. That's nice. all, but let's give them some seconds to join and then we can start our event. I'm back. All right. Hello, Dia. Hello. So I think it's time and we can start. So hello, everyone. My name is Halim Busada and I'm an instructor here in SHA. But before we start our uh, webinar, let's, uh, let me introduce you to SHA for those who don't know uh, our uh, school or our organization. So SHA or Social Zakar Academy is an organization that have a goal to make the education accessible for all of people. And we started four years ago as an offline school, but since the pandemic, we switched to be an online school and that actually helped us uh, spread the knowledge and spread our course to uh, bigger areas or another areas. And yeah, welcome to another webinar. In this webinar, we have Mohamed Dia Wisleti. He's also my ex-mentor in, in, uh, when I was studying. So uh, I admire him the most. Now he's working currently working in Thinkit and he will be introducing us to SAS. So Mohamed Dia, the floor is yours. You can introduce yourself and you can start. For, sorry for interrupting, for the questions, we can have the question on the Q&A. We will answer them at the end of the session. And also we can see the messages in discussion. So whenever you have something or, or you have a question, raise your hand or send the, send the question, or you can send a message. The, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ali. Thank you very much. Let me just share my screen real quick with you guys and <clears throat> we'll go ahead. And yep. Okay, cool. So uh, welcome everyone. Uh, Halim already introduced me and introduced what we're going to talk about, but I'll do it again. So today we're going to have a talk about a syntactically awesome style sheet, also known as SAS. Uh, so here are some of the topics that we're going to talk about first. Uh, so we're going to talk about what is SAS? Uh, why do we need it in the first place? Uh, there's like, some of you might have heard already between SAS and SCSS, what's the difference between them? We'll touch on that. And then we'll be in depth on how to use SAS, which is the main uh, topic. <clears throat> and then we'll touch a bit about other SAS features. And in the end, if we have enough time, we'll have a Q&A slash AMA where you can ask me anything. Uh, first of all, like, hello. Uh, my name is Mohamed Vyosleti. I guess uh, Halim already did the job. I'm a software engineer at Thinkit. Uh, I enjoy teaching and learning about uh, web technologies. Uh, I've already worked before as a uh, an instructor and a mentor in, in, a, in a web development bootcamp. That's where I met uh, Halim and Slim, if you know him. Uh, you can find me over at LinkedIn and Mohammed Tashviye uh, if you want to, if you want to ask any question after this uh, talk. Let's, let's get in, right into it. So uh, one, the problem at hand and why do we need SAS in the first place? What's the need for SAS? Why are we introducing this new thing to you guys? Well, let's be let's be clear from the start. CSS is awesome. Let's CSS and all this feature is such an awesome language, such an awesome sound language, start sheet language, by the way. It's such an awesome thing. It allows us to create an amazing designs of all sorts. Uh, there are a lot of examples of such amazing stuff that you can create with CSS, and a lot of people have already it may created uh, great things. Uh, using CSS, only CSS, by the way, some people have created crazy projects. For example, this 3D bird, I will show you in depth. Uh, this 3D bird, which looks much, much more uh, smoother on the uh, browser, this bird has been created using only, uh, only CSS. If you look here, so one second. Yeah, if you look here, this is the HTML for the project. Very minimal, it's just empty divs everywhere. It's nothing but empty divs with classes. The JS is 
completely empty. There is nothing here that you can use with JavaScript. And CSS is huge. There's a lot of classes. There is a lot of selectors with a lot of keyframes. There's 323 lines here to create this amazing project. Uh, there's also this, an animation of the night sky, all in CSS as well. The HTML, again, is just... It's just empty. If we look here, we see the HTML is completely empty. It's just divs with IDs and that's it. Uh, if it only has this span, like it have this title span, which is we can also remove and the application still works fine. I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't have uh, what's called. I don't have edit access. This is not mine. But again, VGS. Nothing to see here. It's made by uh, ScreenShake. Shout outs to him. Great work on this. The CSS is huge as well. If we look at the compiled, the actual original CSS, we'll see that it's much, much more than how much. Look at this. And it is how many lines? How many lines? Come on. Surprising, only 85 lines, amazing work from them. Again, this is made with only CSS, not a single line of JavaScript, and just very, very minimum HTML. Another example that I really love and shows how great some people with CSS is this game. Someone made a game only with CSS. The JavaScript, again, is empty, the HTML is minimal, and the game is fully functional and actually very smooth. I don't think it, it doesn't lag at all. It's very good. And um, I am bad at the game, but the game is very good. Uh, anyhow, all of this stuff has been done with CSS. If CSS is this great, CSS is this amazing, why do we need to create, or why do you need to use SAS? Why, why are we talking today about SAS? Well, CSS is a bit hard, and it gets even harder the more CSS we have. Uh, I tell you, if I tell you that you're on a project in a company, uh, one second. If I'm in your project in a company and you would have to work on this code, for example. So let's remove these. This code, for example, where do you start? Where do you read? What do you understand from this? Uh, again, by yourself alone. There's a lot of the styles, there are a lot of, a lot of classes, a lot of uh, IDs, which one is which? And this is, gets bigger and bigger with bigger websites and bigger applications. Uh, Something else is that big apps, uh, big apps CSS code tend to be replicated in multiple places. You will find the same CSS written in two places the same. Let's look at this for a little. We have this sky ID, so the sky ID selector. And we can see that it's written here, it's written here, written here, 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 here. Anytime that you're going to need to write something related to the uh, div with the ID sky or the element with the ID sky, you're going to have to write hashtag sky over and over and over again. This takes a lot of time it's, and makes it harder and harder to refactor and redo your work. Let's say, for example, one day the sky ID has been changed from sky to, I don't know, clear sky or something like that. We will have to go through all of these skies and remove them and change them to clear sky or something like that. This takes a lot of time and takes a lot of effort. Comes in the solution, which is SAS. Uh, first of all, what is SAS? So SAS stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheet, and it's an alternative to syntax to CSS. More on how it's an alternative CSS syntax later. It allows us to write CSS in a faster and more uh, concise manner. Uh, if we look at an example here, this an example of SAS. So right off the bat, the, things that, the thing that you might hit you is, uh, where's the curly bracket and where's the semicolons? That's the first thing that you might see. And this is one of the main things for SAS. You don't need curly brackets and you don't need uh, semicolons. They are just optional now. Bon, it's not optional, it's, you, don't, you don't write them at all. Uh, SAS works with identations. Identation is this small space here for those who don't know. The small space here, which is two spaces on your keyboard, is called an identation. Uh, two, sometimes four, depends on your computer, but it's two identation for this picture. If you see, you see anything that is two identation from the, from the edge of the screen, it's all inside the sky. It's like having a curly braces on everything that is two identation from the sky. And the thing is, 
even if we write without uh, with the uh, with the uh, curly braces, we're putting that identification anyway, or our our or our uh, uh, editor is putting that identification. So it makes sense for this to be here. And the more identification you make, the deeper you go inside. So you see this div right here, this div right here, this div is two identification from the sky, therefore it's inside the sky. And you might wonder, why is there a div selector inside the sky selector? Usually when we write CSS, it's only a selector and inside it there's styles, like selector sky, and then inside it there's margin top, perspective, uh, and filter, which all of them are uh, styles, they are not selectors. Well, if we look back at how the picture was here, you see here, sky div. This means that every div inside the sky was going to have this transform style preserve 3D style. Instead of us having to rewrite the hashtag sky, sky every time we need something inside the, inside the hashtag sky, we're going to just write it inside it directly. So now this reads as sky, ID sky, any div inside it is going to have the transform. The ID sky, any bird inside it is going to have the animation. Any wind, any class wind inside the class bird inside sky is going to have all of this uh, style. This allows us to have nested code. This allows us to describe how our application works. We're going to have the sky. This is the entire canvas of our application. If I show you again on the application here, the gray part here, the white part is going to be the sky. The sky is going to have what? It's going to have the wind inside it and also the bird, which is inside the wind. If we look at the code again, there's the sky, Inside the sky, there's the bird, and inside the bird, there's also the wind. So it goes that level by level. And if we look, every time we go two spaces forward, two spaces forward, two spaces forward, two spaces here, four spaces here, so on and so forth. Now, I've been talking about SAS, 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 but you might have caught me saying CSS, CSS, or you heard about SCSS. So which one is which, which one, and which one is which, and what's the difference? Well, SCSS is SAS, but with more of a CSS-like syntax. SAS is known as an alternative syntax to CSS. It doesn't have curly bases, and it doesn't have uh, semicolons. Well, SCSS is, is not an alternative syntax, is more of a superset. A superset means it has all of the features of CSS plus more. If you look here, this is an example of the SCSS code, and it's very, very, very familiar to the CSS code. It's, it has the curly brackets again, and it has the semicolon. I prefer this syntax over the other one, over the identification, honestly, but both of them work the same, and both of them are the same, basically, and both of them, we're going to see how to use them in the house section. Again, we have the sky ID. We open the curly brackets. It ends here. I think I'm missing a curly bracket here, but whatever. And inside it, we can find other selector, like the div. This means any sky selector with the div selector, any bird class with the sky selector. So it goes deeper and deeper into uh, every curly bracket. Now, your question might be, that's good and all, that's great and all, but how do I use it? Now, this is where we're going to see some of the code. So let me share my screen to my, uh, share my screen to my desktop and we'll see how to use it exactly. So first of all, I'm going to create a folder on my computer. I'm going to call it a CSS. Here we go. Mm. CSS. So let's open this this uh, this inside VS Code. So uh, for for any of you that is using anything but VS Code, you should be able to follow. It's the same way. Uh, Sublime, I don't know, Notepad, whatever you would like to. You just need a terminal. So. Uh, first of all, the first requirement that you need to use SAS on your computer uh, on your uh, uh, on your project is Node. You need Node to be installed on your computer. So if I go back to uh, Chrome real quick, so to install Node, you need to go to node.js.org. So node.js.org, you're going to find here like, uh, you're going to find here recommended for most users like the download. It's going to tell you like Windows, if you're using Windows, Mac OS, Linux, whatever you're using, and it's going to be downloaded. It's very straightforward. I'm not going to install it uh, in today. So 
just you need to open the terminal. I'll just open the terminal here from uh, from VS Code. And what you need to do is run these commands. So let's start with the first one, npm init. So this tells like, yeah, of course I messed this up. Uh, this tells us that we'll, this creates you the package.json file, and this, tell, this helps you install and remember what you need for your project. Let's real quickly create the files for our project. So we need going to need the index.html. We're going to need a new file that you're not used to, which is style.scss. SCSS. And so if you won't need to use SAS, if you would like to use SAS instead with the identification, uh, with the identification style, you can just use uh, SAS instead and it will be the same exact thing. And you will need a style, style.css. All right. So the thing is about SAS is that it doesn't work on the browser. If we go to the browser and try to write SAS code, it will not work. If we try to do the identification thing, it will break the code, uh, break the browser. And if we try to write the curly bracket stuff, it will also break the code. So for that, we need to write, we need to write the code in a normal, uh, in a normal SAS fashion, in a SAS fashion, and then we're going to compile it. We're going to transform it into a normal CSS. And I'll show you exactly how we're going to do that. Uh, first of all, we're going to use npm i, npm install, dash d, because it's a dev dependency. Uh, we can talk about this later in the Q&A section. So npm install dash d, and we're going to install node, I think it's node dash sas. Right, sorry for interrupting V, but as it's installing, I think we have a question. Do you want to leave it for later or should we answer? Uh, now? While it's installing, yes. Yeah, All right. So the question is from Dionysius. He asked, I noticed identification also in SCSS on these slides. Is it necessarily? Uh, no, that's the thing. It's not necessarily at all in SCSS. It's more of a just to be more readable. The thing is, if you try here to remove, if you try to remove the identification here, this will cause you an error. The, uh, the computer will not understand what this margin top is supposed to be. However, if you come here and remove this, it's still, the computer will still understand that margin top belongs here. It's just, we put it here as more readable for us humans, but for the computer, it will not matter at all. It's, it's the difference between this will cause an error if you remove the identification, this will not cause an error as long as your curly brackets are correct. Does that answer your question? I think that answered the question. Maybe he can answer in the discussion section if that answered the question or not. But... And this should take a second. There we go. And it finished. So. Once you once you finish with this uh, command, if you check your package JSON, you will find that under dev dependencies you have node SAS, and this is very important. So this is what we need to compile our code. The next step is we need to create a script, and I'll explain the script while I'm writing it. So a script is instead of having to write the command over and over and over and over, a script makes it easier to memorize it in your project. So other people, when they use your project, can use it directly. So the script is going to be node SAS, node SAS. Uh, we're going to have, we're going to include, include dash path. This, this, is, uh, this is important for, uh, how can I say it? This is important for uh, debugging later. And we're going to we're going to we're going to transform from SCSS, not from SAS. So we're going to use SCSS. Now, once we have this, we're going to tell it which file we that is the SCSS and which file we want it to become CSS. The file that is here SCSS is going to be style.scss, and the other file is going to be style.css. And if we run this, we should be good. So npm, to run this to run this command, you need to write npm run CSS. And there we go. It's working fine. If it shows you this, it's working fine. So let's look at how CSS 
uh, a CSS style looks when we change it to a CSS. Let's start with writing very, very, very simple CSS, which is not special to CSS, uh, uh, a CSS. So let's say, for example, we want to target the body. And we want to change it to, we change its background color to, I don't know, red or whatever. It doesn't matter, no, this one. If we run our command, if we look here inside the style.css, we run our command, uh, it's empty. And this is uh, not empty. So if we run the command, we go to the style, you can see here, the code from here has been compiled and transformed into this. But wait, they look the exact same, you might say. Well, that's because this is normal CSS. What if we add extra stuff to it? Uh, before we add extra stuff to it, let's let's set up our HTML so we can see so we can see uh, how it looks. So first of all, we're going to need to link our CSS. So we will just link rel. It's going to be style sheet, style sheet, and then href is going to be is going to be. So here's the thing. What's something very, very important that you need to remember is that you need to link the CSS, not the SCSS. We're going to write all of our code inside the SCSS, and we're going to have all of our creative and working uh, creative work inside the SCSS. However, what's delivered to the HTML is CSS. Again, why? Because SCSS does not work on the browser, and the HTML is what's going to uh, what the browser is going to read. Instead. The HTML is going to link to the CSS file that is compiled every time, and then the CSS, uh, and then when we work on the style.scss, we're going to compile it to CSS. Let's have, for example, an H1. Okay. So an H1 with the hello, hello, I don't know, SHA. So uh, let's try to give this H1 some styles. So we're going to target the H1 with the selector. Of a selector, and we're going to write, for example, let's give it the background color of blue. I like giving background colors to uh, to debug my test the code. Let's say, let's ask a question of for any of you guys, if you wanted, if you wanted to give this hash this h1 a hover effect as well, what would you do? Like when you hover it, it changes color to I don't know red, for example. What we would do? We we will write this. We will write h1 h1 hover, hover, and then like give it a background color of, background color of uh, red. Maybe also like a uh, font style, voila, a font style of italic, for example. So uh, for example, like this, this is how we usually write CSS. The way we write it in SCSS is a bit different. You see this H1 right here? We are repeating ourselves. We are repeating the same, uh, the same, the same code. So we can just remove this, put it here instead. So we put this selector and this style inside the original one. And instead of writing the word H1 twice, we can use the special operator ampersand. So this is called ampersand. Uh, I just realized that my screen might be a bit small. Do you see it better right now? The ampersand. The amp this is ampersand. The ampersand means that the, it's going to always be replaced by the original query, the parent query. So this is equivalent to saying h1 hover. If we save this, let's uh, run our script. If we run our script and go to the CSS file, we'll see that, that here's how it looks h1 by itself, and then h1 hover by itself. Let's look at our HTML in the browser. So I'll just open it from here. And you are not supposed to see that a second. Okay, so you can see here, okay, it looks very ugly, but whenever we hover it, uh, do you see the screen or not? Yes, we yeah. can see it, yes. Okay, let's uh, let's go back here. Where is my Chrome? Yeah. Yes. All right. So we can see that when we hover it, it gets the style of the hover, with like a style of like italic, and the background becomes red. I'm going to change the background to be 
uh, blue, by the way, uh, the back, background to color. It's easier to see that way. And this is also color. Let's, we need to always run the, uh, run the npm run CSS again to compile our code. So to update our code. So now it says color here and color here. It might look weird because of the, uh, uh, the editation here as one of the CSS, but if I save, it turns it back again. It's just the way uh, the compiler works. The compiler is what takes a CSS code and changes it back to CSS code. So, uh, so very concise. We have like everything related to the H1 in the H1 selector. And if we look back at the browser, we refresh, we see that it is as we expected. If we hover over it again, now. Let's say, for example, we want to also, when we click add, to change color. So let's say that we want we want to have uh, what's called the active pseudo, pseudo selector. So the active pseudo selector as well, and we're gonna give it color of, I don't know, purple. So, and yeah, color of purple. Let's look at this, ah, uh, yeah. Always, I always forget to run the, uh, the command every time. So let's run the command again, come here and refresh. And what you're gonna see is that when I click, if, I don't know if you can hear it. Huh? If you click, it changes back, it changes to purple. So here we have written three selectors for the same, for the same element all inside each other meaning it doesn't get away from each other. This will not get lost uh, somewhere else in the code and we will always have access to it. If you, again, let's look at the style.css. This is how it's going to look at the very end. But again, we're never going to touch the style.css file. It's, go it's just for the browser to see what we're going to see and we're going to work with and how has our creative freedom go nuts on is this file. And from you can see, any developer that's going to, uh, to check for code, anyone that's going to work with us, if he needs anything to change the H1, is going to go right in here, again, only. Let's have some crazy stuff with it. So for example, let's create, let's create uh, two ULs, uh, two ULs. So ULs multiplied by two in VS Code will create two ULs with the class name, Let's call it names. Let's call it names, sir. Right? Yeah, names. And inside it, let's create four allies. Uh -huh. Four allies. So this means that two ULs with the, with the class names, and inside of each one of them is a f I want four allies, not two. Four allies. And if we create it, there we go. So the first UL with names, the second UL with names and for allies. Now, by the way, you know what? I want the allies to have the, the class name of names item. There we go. So a UL with all the class, uh, with the class name names, an ally with the class name names item, and another UL with the same classes. Let's fill these real quick. Uh, so easier real quick, so I don't know. Let's fill it with A, B, C, and D. I don't wanna, if you want, you can uh, you can participate in the chat and I'll write your name if you want to. I don't know, I'll put them in the chat next to me. So, so let's go A1, A2, A3, and A4. There we go. So uh, these are the names and let's go crazy on them with the CSS. So let's forget about the H1. We'll go back to it later if we need to. Uh, first of all, let's make it that all LIs inside of UL, inside of UL have a different opacity. So UL, all LIs inside it, all LIs inside it, are going to have opacity of 0 0.8, 0 0.8. So this is the US. I'm going to change this to surnames, by the way. Let's change this to surnames, right? And instead of UL, let's change any ally inside of a surname 
to have an opacity of 0 0.8. So uh, let's first always remember to run the code, run the, uh, run the command, and then, then if we reload, we can see that all of these and all of them has that opacity that we talked about. Let's test it again, by the way. Let's give it opacity of one and see. I like to uh, double check always. Is it darker, Halim? Do you see it? That, do you see that they are darker? Oh, yes. And I think we have a small question from Akis. Yes, she's asking what is li. Li is a list element. So you well means order uh, an ordered uh, list. So this is an ordered list. It doesn't have one, two, three, four. And am I too blurry, by the way? Yeah, uh, one. Two, it doesn't have one, two, three, four. And the li means a list element. So so that's this is a list element by itself. This is a list element by itself. So on and so forth. So if we go back to uh, if we go back here, for example, if you want, guys, we can change this to an OL, which means an ordered list. If we look at ordered list, there are one, two, three, four, five. Cool. So, yeah, again, are they darker? Are they not darker? I'm not sure. Uh, my eyes are not like they used to be. What's 0 0.5? Let's run the command and. Yep, so the first few are, are way uh, less darker than the next ones. Why? Because again, let's look at our selector, not this, this. Let's go look at our selector. So our selector, what does it say? It says any li inside of the class surnames is going to have opacity 0 0.5. This is the class surnames and any li inside, this does not include these ones. Let's also look at something else. What if you want to? What if you want to change uh, the style of the last element only? Well, you can use something in in CSS known as known as last child. In pseudo in uh, SCSS, last child is much easier to use. It's just, it's just like this, last child, last child. And this one, we don't, uh, and this one we can say, I don't know, what do we give the style for the last shot? Let's give it font, font size larger. Okay, notice how this one, this one does not need the ampersand like these two, because this one is not, uh, is not a pseudo selector like these ones. So the pseudo selectors need the ampersand, but you can, for other ones, you don't need the ampersand because it's not a pseudo selector. And if we go back here, we will see that, ah yeah, we need to always, need to always run the command. And we need to refresh. And you can see D is much bigger than the other ones. Uh, all is good. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I would like to show you something now a bit spicy. Something that you get, maybe you will get uh, tired of or something that you will really uh, hate is that this whole like run NPM, run CSS, NPM, CSS, every time we need to change something, we need to run in CSS again. And for that, sorry, and that is fixable as well. So we would need to install something called Nodimon. So let's install npm install or npm i is the same thing. And we can write Nodimon. Uh, installing Nodimon is going to help us uh, avoid this repetitive thing. So let's go back to the package JSON and let us, let us write another script. If my computer wants to let me, let's write the other script, which is called watch CSS. So this is going to something called watching. Watching, whenever we say watching in uh, with scripts or web development in general means that something is going to stay in the background working. We're not going to have to do it every time. It's going to work in the background. It watches for changes, for example. So we're going to use Nodimon, which is a tool used to uh, watch for changes with Node. Uh, we're going to do stash E, which means execute SAS. So, so it's going to execute SAS and it's going to be 
dash x and npm and we're going to put npm or on css the command that we have been spamming for the last 10 minutes and let's run it to see npm run watch sus css uh, css there we go it is watching let's go here i did the mistake yeah i did a mistake this is supposed to be scss because we're watching scss let's look here let's go here let's change this from large to extra large xx large okay see when i saved it redid this and if we go check the style.css file we'll find that it is xx large so all we need to do now is save our file and it will uh, reload for us by itself. We don't have to rewrite that command every time. Clear? Now, let's do my favorite, my favorite, favorite feature of a CSS. And this, and I love this feature so much because it helps me a lot with my work. Uh, we noticed that, let's say that we want to target all, uh, all names, names item, right? And we wanted to target it with the names, like we want to do some work with the class name or L class name. So let's come here. Let's say, for example, we want uh, dot names, for example, names. Cool. So dot names, so the class names, and we're going to give it, for example, I don't know, uh, list pointer, list style, and we're going to change it to American for example. So uh, if we go back to our HTML page and we refresh, uh, it's this weird symbols. This is the American, uh, uh, this is bigger because of the XX large that we did. And these are the American symbols for a list. Uh, we can change it to something else if you want to. Uh, I don't know, do you know any nice ones? Let's, let's use Roman numerals. And if we refresh, yeah, Roman numerals, I, two, I, 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 I whatever. So, but my favorite feature is this. My favorite feature is that now that I've worked with the uh, uh, names, I want every every class, every class that is names plus something, which something very, very common. Well, very commonly we find you will find this class, you'll find the class called the parent name, like this, underscore something. And this is very useful and very oh sorry, Armenian. I read it American, sorry. <laughs> Uh, uh, that explains why it looks like that. Yeah, Armenia. So, uh, so we have names and we have items. Items. It's very common to have like an item like this. So it's list item. So, uh, so to have an item like this with the name of a parent, like names, item, for example. These, if it, like these, would have like surname, item, for example. So in CSS. In a way to have to combine two letters into uh, two words into one class name, that is not possible. That is not something you can do. Something it is possible with very advanced queries that not everyone can uh, can use, and it takes a lot of learning to do. However, in SCSS, it's very simple. We'll just use the ampersand because again, the ampersand re like replaces by the parent selector ampersand underscore name. Uh, items. This allows us to select anything that is dot names dash underscore items. And let's give it, for example, some style. Uh, does anyone suggest any style for this? I don't know. Uh, font, font style. Oh, for example, I don't know. If we refresh, I guess the font style object does not work the way I think it does. Come on. Let's see. What other styles can I use here, Halim? You can go by color. Why overcomplicate? I hate using the same style always. Okay, I'll use color. Always and color and background color. That's what I do. Okay, I'll use favorite. color with aqua color. And this should change not anything that has the class name, names underscore item, which all of these, and at the same time, all of these. And if we go check the, the Chrome, it's still not working. Uh, did I miss something with my uh, compiler? 
Is it running? Uh, it is running. And this is running. Names items. I misspelled something a second. Uh, items? Items, and you have item. Ah, item. I wrote it item. Okay, cool. So, makes sense. Uh, yes, so let's look here. Let's refresh. The aqua color for all of them, and this still works nice. So, this is re actually, and I'm not kidding, this is my favorite feature to be able to combine uh, multiple. Uh, multiple names into one, uh, multiple names into one CSS selector. And SCSS works on this feature a lot. If you open the documentation, there's a lot of functionality that helps you with this. So this is it for the live coding section. If we want, we can, if we have time, we'll come back and do more stuff. Let's still go back to our slides. So uh, we stopped here. So how to use it? So now, is that it? Well, no, we're not even close to scratching the surface. There's a lot, lot more stuff that SCSS offers. Number one, and also one of my favorites, uh, variables are basically uh, variables. So CSS variables, I'm sorry, I just jumped into it, so excited. So uh, CSS variables, variables are basically a bucket to hold other values to be reused later. So it's very useful to avoid code duplication. It's very useful to not rewrite the same thing twice and makes refactoring easy. Let's look at this example real quick. So any variable in SCSS and SAS are, is going to be, this is SAS code, by the way, from, from the lack of curly brackets and semicolon. So anything that you that is starting with a dollar sign is called a variable. So this, for example, base color is the variable of this color. I don't know, it looks, if anyone understands hex colors, coloring, you get it, anyhow. So, and we have border dark, which is a darker color of this, which is an RGBA with this color with the 0 0.88, uh, uh, 0 0.88 opacity. So now this is a variable and this is also a variable. If we now in any class alert, the border is going to be changed to one pixel solid dollar sign border dark. When we compile this to CSS, this will be changed with this color, which is the RGBA with 0, 0 0.8. So now let's say, for example, we want to change the, color, the base color to green or red or whatever we want. We just have to change this line here only. We won't have to touch this nor this. This is so useful when refactoring uh, big uh, code bases. Instead, like if it was not, if it was just CSS, not SAS, you would have to change this, you have to change this, and this as well. You have to change every time this color is made. And needless to say, it's very easy to mistake this color for other colors that are not so related. So this makes it much, much easier to use. However, uh, something you might be thinking now for those of you more with CSS, I keep on going to the next, to the next uh, slide. So uh, that CSS has introduced variables in 2015 variables in CSS are natively available. They don't have the same syntax like this. They have a syntax of double dash before it. So anything with double dash before is called a variable in CSS. But that was in 2016. Back in the day, Hasra, in 2006, the only way to do CSS variables was uh, in CSS, uh, SCSS. And the problem was that was, was only the only way and it was very, very useful. And, but that is not the only feature that made SAS very unique. So from that time, the time they had only this feature, and from that time on, they kept on adding more features. For example, mix in and include. So mix in and include are a way to avoid rewriting the same style for different elements. For example, this reset list uh, mix in. So this is a reset list. So reset list is a bunch, is a, a block of, uh, styles that instead of rewriting it every time, you would just use it, write it once, and then add it whatever you need. It's like a placeholder. So reset list, reset list is this style. So margin zero, padding zero, and list style none. This will take all of the style out of uh, a list. So that's therefore, uh, thus called reset list. Reset list. Uh, in the nav, we can just come here and say add include reset list. And this will remove 
the uh, this will apply these styles. And in the div, and at any div, we can also include this and also add our own styles. If we look over here, this is how it looks after we compile our code, after we run the npm run CSS command on it. The nav is going to have exactly these three, these three styles. So the margin zero, padding zero, and less style none. And the div is going to have those three plus the background and the float here. What's more important is, let's say in the div, you want these three, but you also want the margin to be 10. You can just come here and write margin 10 and margin, and here this margin will be 10. Always your styles here in the, in the new selector will out override the older ones. And it will work just like if you write them under each other in CSS. Very, very useful for co large code bases. Another thing that you might notice, uh, you might notice that it's not in CSS, but it's in all programming languages, is if else. At if and at else are two operators that allow us to conditionally use styles depending on multiple factors. This is very useful for dark mode, for example. Uh, I'll, I'll ask you a question. Do you ever wonder why there's not that much dark mode websites back in the day in the internet? Well, it's not that people didn't like dark modes or that making dark modes was not uh, was not possible. No, it was possible, but it was extremely, extremely hard because of this problem. There is no if else condition in, in uh, CSS. If we look now with SAS, it is very possible. So uh, light background is a variable here, like we talked about it. It's a variable that has the light color, a light color. Light text is a variable that have clearly dark color, so it's dark on light. Dark background is a dark background color, with a dark text is a lighter text, a lighter color, therefore it's white on black. Uh, we have this mixin. Again, mixins are a block of code that you can use everywhere. So theme colors, this mixin takes a variable. So you can make your mixins take variables, uh, make take variables as a parameter. So light theme, so it asks, is it light theme, yes or no? So this is always going to be true as a default. So when the user opens the website, it will always going to be true. If it's light theme, if it's true, if it is light theme, the background color is going to be the light background and the color is going to be light text. So it's dark on light, uh, dark on white. Else, at else, we're going to say, at else means if it's not light theme. So this, if it's a light theme, this, if it's not light theme, therefore dark theme. And background color is going to change to dark and the color is going to change to dark text. Therefore it's white on black. Uh, Banner, the banner now, the selector banner is going to include theme color with the true at first. And every dark part of our application is going to include the theme color, but false. So the dark parts will be dark and the banner and uh, white parts are going to be stay white. This is extremely useful for, uh, for dark mode and makes it much, much easier to do it. It's not as easy as you would think still with these, but it's much easier than doing it normally. Uh, and there's many, many, many more built-in functionality and utility features in SCSS that I can't just cover all in one talk. Uh, here's a quick round of some features that I personally like as well. A string to uppercase and string to lowercase, which just takes some text and make it uppercase or make it lowercase. Uh, there's color dot dark, uh, color dot darken, and color dot lighten, which they darken or lighten a color accordingly. Duh. Uh, for example, this darken with this color. Uh, this color from to darken it 20%, taking this lightness of 92% and changing it to 72%. And the result would be this color. And there's more like functions at each default mixing parameter and a lot, a lot, a lot of other, uh, other functionalities and utilities that I can't get to mention all of them. And that's it. Thank you all for uh, joining me. Thank you for SHA for having me as well. And have at it. Go ahead with the questions if you want to. I know that I run a lot, but I want to have enough time to uh, to have the Q and A. Halim already knows how much I uh, how much I talk fast when in lectures. Yeah, it's okay. I suffered and from that. If you time. want, you can ask me about you can ask me about uh, uh, career choices or development or whatever. So All let's right. see. Okay? Thank you, Dia. I will be reading the questions uh, now. Go ahead. So we have in the Q&A first, and then we can go to this question. Uh, Dionysus asked again, I mean, how 
the user changes? Do we use, uh, do we need GS? I think you mean, how do we change the, uh, the class when you, when you try to create a dark mode, I think. So, uh, yeah, the thing is with SCSS, it's possible to change the value of, uh, of a variable everywhere. So you can just like the dollar sign light, uh, light theme to equal to dark, uh, to false, and that will change the application to dark. So if that answers your question. Uh, okay. yeah. So we have, we have a question from. We don't need GS, I, I saw the other one. <laughs> okay, so more of a general question. As far as I know, Node.js is a backend server side thing. What says as a front end thing has to do with the backend thing? Yes, so uh, whether you're going to work front end only or back end only, Node.js has been very, very useful everywhere that we started using it in both front end and back end. Yeah, in back end, uh, we write code for Node.js. Node.js for frontend is more of a, a tool, more of a, a way to have to make things much easier. Uh, and what's the problem? So since we can't run SCSS in the front end in the browser, that's like the front end, we need to compile it and we use Node to compile it. Node is just basically just a program to run through it. So it's not, you're not writing code for, uh, uh, you're not writing code for our code. Uh, the backend, we're just using Node.js for as a sim, as a tool, no more, no less. Right. So the next question is from Abdul Rahman. He asked how to structure files in a project, like that's uh, like yeah. SCSS and other working stuff. Uh, usually, if I can show you, usually the way I structure my project when it comes to SCSS is that. Uh, is that I'm always ha I always have like a style.scss file outside if I'm using it and and the rest of my styles are going to be inside the styles folder. Uh, styles folder. And I'll just throw this in here so I don't have to see it, I don't have to deal with it. And all of these are usually inside a public folder, or something like this. Uh, That's a file. Yes. Yeah. Public folder, for example, and I will have this here and this here. Usually, uh, structuring structuring files with styling and HTML is not that complicated because most of the time you're going to have one HTML page or a bunch of pages in one folder, like the public folder, and you're going to have one style.scss or style.css page, and like usually it gets harder with uh, with ordering with JavaScript, but usually we prefer as much as possible, you prefer to have much as possible uh, folders about the same logic and minimum minimum amount of files in each file in each folder and minimum amount of lines in each uh, file. So if you have like a uh, like CSS file that has I don't know five hundred lines, maybe it's a good idea to split it into five files which different parts of the application which will not affect your performance almost at all okay almost, almost. <laughs> okay <laughs> the next question is from pelagia she asked so the way the the way to use sas syntax is having the dot css file and set up the compiler and is it possible to use the SAS syntax with other frameworks such as Bootstrap or React? Uh, not really Bootstrap. You can use them together at the same time. Yes, but you can just change Bootstrap to SAS. Uh, with React, yes, you can. It's also the, uh, it also includes uh, a bit more of a setup like than what we did here. What we did here is a very minimal setup. With React, you're going to need a bit more of a setup. However, it's it's the same way. It's you're going to set up the uh, set up the project to compile your code from SCSS or SAS to uh, to uh, see a normal CSS, and you're going to write all of your code in an SCSS file as usual. In React, I don't think you're going to be able to write. 
of this SCSS or SAS syntax inside of GSX. I don't think that is possible. So you're going to have to write it in a separate file anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's very much it. You can use it with whatever you want. Uh, one, something that I almost forgot to mention is if you want guys to play around with SCSS and SAS, there's this website called SCSS to CSS. So this GS for Matter uh, website, I think we're done with this. Uh, a CSS website when you can just write these maxims, that's me writing them for the uh, talk. And then if you click uh, this, let me just put this now. If you click on the CSS, uh, CSS to CSS, it compiles it for you on the browser. You don't have to do any V, you don't have to download Node.js, you don't have to download anything. I just wanted to do that. Uh, I did the setup for you to know how to do it and also like to show it in the browser. But yeah, if you want to just try how CSS, a CSS and SAS works as well, uh, I think you just change this to SAS and it will, oh no. If you change this to A and there you go. Yeah, it changes to, this is the SAS syntax and it will change it to CSS syntax. I have another, whatever. So yeah. If you want, if you really want to uh, to try it on the web without having all of the setup, this website is pretty good. Jason Jasonformatter.org. Another question? Well, I don't think that we have another question. So, okay, I think we have a question. Is from. Thanasis, sorry if I'm destroying the names, guys. I have problem with pronunciation. But the question is, could we combine SAS with BEM naming convention? Yep, absolutely. You can, you can, you can, uh, you can combine it with BEM naming convention, with the standard Mozilla naming convention, whatever naming convention that you'd like to use. It's usually like the preference of the uh, dev teams, and as long as you're your team is, your team is, uh, how can I say it? Consistent with the naming scheme, you're able to use it in SAS or whatever you'd like to. All right. So anyone have any other question? Well, I think this is it. So thank you again, uh, Vie. Thank you everyone that attended our webinar. Let me thank you one by one. Sorry again for destroying some names. Thank you, Abdurrahman, Ahmed, Akis, Dimitris, Dionysis, uh, Georgios, HGS, Irena, Javad, Mariam, Mansoor, Mike, Mohammed, Mohammed again. Nicoletta, Omar Farouk, uh, Panagiotis, Peggy, Pelagia, Rajbir, Riyadh, Sabrine, Sandra, Sirin, Sophia, Sophia again, Than Thanasis, Fasil Fasilis, Yasmin, Yusuf, and Zakaria. Thank you all for attending our webinar and hope to see you again in another webinar. Thank you again, Mohammed Thie, and that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Bye. See you soon, hopefully. Bye, guys. Bye.